Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm pitching two punchy cars against each other. In fact, these are two very popular cars on my channels. So we've got BMW's brand new M240i xDrive, and we've got Audi's fairly new RS3 in a saloon. I know these two aren't direct rivals, and Audi RS is a rival to a full fat BMW M car, but the new M2 is still a long way away and the customer that is looking at one of these is potentially also looking at one of these. The brand new M240i xDrive starts at £47,500. The RS3 in base trim starts at £56,000. So there's almost £10,000 worth of difference between the two, but you would expect that because once again, this is an M light and that's a full RS car. Obviously, you can spec them up to a lot more than that. And in fact, this particular press car is about £54,000 as it sits. And this particular press car is about sixty-three grand. So once again, with reasonable amount of options, there's still about ten grand worth of difference between the two. But as many of you know, these RS3s are fetching massive premiums at the moment. I know people that have paid £80,000 for used approved ones, which is just insane. It's a great car, but it's not 80 grand's worth. Whereas the M240i xDrive, well, you can wander into your local showroom and order one, but they're still gonna be between six and nine months. But at least you're not gonna be paying sort of 20 grand overs for them. I think the wait list on an RS3 at the moment is 12 months plus. I'm not gonna talk much about the optional extras fitted to both of these cars, but I will point out that this M240i xDrive has the all important M Pro Pack, which gives you the slightly wider wheels and the Michelin PS4S tires. It also has those wheel extender spats on it, which gives it a bit more of an aggressive look. This car's in black sapphire, and this one is in python yellow. The weather today has been a bit crazy. When the sun's out, it really looks yellow, when the sun goes away and the clouds come out, it almost goes like a mossy green. It's bizarre, it really changes and fluctuates. I really like this color in the flesh, but I'm not the biggest fan of it in pictures and on camera, so not sure how it's coming across. Both of these cars are now four wheel drive, so you've got Audi's Quattro system and BMW's xDrive system. This one is essentially a front wheel drive setup that sends power and torque to the rear axle when it needs it, but it has the new trick torque splitting rear diff, which if you've watched my initial video on this car, I'm a big fan of. It's completely transformed the way it drives. And this one is essentially a rear wheel drive car that sends power and torque to the front axle when it needs it. So sort of opposite ends of the scale. And while we're talking about that, both cars have staggered wheel setups. The BMW, a more traditional way. So we've got two, four, five section tires on the front axle and 255 on the rear, so bigger on the rear. But the Audi, well that has 265 profile tires on the front axle. That's even wider than the rear ones on the BMW, but it only has 245 section on the rear. So narrower tires on the rear axle, which has helped eliminate some of that dreaded understeer on the new RS3. In terms of where the magic happens, well, let's start with the RS3. That is an iconic two and a half litre, five cylinder turbocharged unit. It's been around for about 10 years now. Obviously it's been updated and changed over those years. It now produces 400 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque. And that runs through a seven speed dual clutch gearbox. The BMW, it has a B58. I'm sure you've heard me say B58 a few times on the channel before. That's a three litre inline six turbocharged unit produces 374 horsepower, so it's about 26 horsepower down on the Audi, but an identical 500 newton meters of torque. And that runs through the familiar ZF eight-speed gearbox, so traditional automatic gearbox, but you've got an extra cog. 
So it'll be interesting to see how both of these cars feel on the road because although their outputs are very similar, they both deliver them in very different ways. Audi claim that the RS3 will do 0 to 62 miles an hour in just 3.8 seconds. BMW say this M240i xDrive will do the 0 to 62 sprint in 4.3 seconds. So that's half a second slower. This two door coupe from BMW weighs in at just under 1700 kilos. Whereas the four door saloon from Audi weighs in at just under 1600 kilos. I think there's about 120 kilos difference between them. And obviously weight kills acceleration. But let's go and test that out with the race box right now. First thing we're gonna do is test out the car's claimed acceleration figures. So I've got my good friend Andy sitting next to me and he is literally gonna be holding my phone uh, with the Racebox Mini results on it. So we're gonna line up here for the first one. We're gonna do three runs in both cars. They've both got about 80% of fuel in them. Uh, they've both got camera gear in the boot and obviously they're both gonna have two fairly large adults up front. So this is a real life test, if you like. So, sports automatic, left foot is hard down on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, launch control active, here we go. Amazing off the line, and there we go. 3.92. Here we go, run number two in the M240i. Launch control active. Computer says 3.94. Wow, so that is, uh, that's consistency, I guess. Like two almost identical runs. Third and final attempt. Left foot is hard down on the brake. Right foot on the accelerator. Launch control active. Here we go. Those gear changes. 3.95. So what was that then? What were the three times we've just recorded? So you've had a 3.92, yeah. a 3.94, yeah. and a 3.95. I mean, if that is not consistency, and if that is not the clutches warming up and being slightly less effective each time, I mean, you just couldn't, you couldn't write that. So very consistent. Um, all of them just below four seconds to 60 miles an hour, remember, not 62. Um, you can add another 10 to 62, but very impressive. Let's go and see what the RS3 does. Right, now we're in the RS3. Audi claim this will do the 0 to 62 sprint in just 3.8 seconds, which is ridiculous. Uh, we've got the Racebox Mini ready and Andy has the uh, phone there. So yeah, I'm in performance mode with traction off. Left foot is hard down on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. This has got a proper launch control, like really sounds good. And ready to go, here we go. Oh, crazy off the line. And there we go. <laughs> 3.61. Wow. Round two in the RS3. Race box mini is ready with Andy. Left foot is hard down on the brake. Right foot on the accelerator. Launch control active and here we go. Three, six, four. Another blinder. I mean, that time it felt like it was struggling a bit more off the line. You could feel it sort of tram lining left and right as the front axle was trying to find grip, trying to dig in. But I mean, that's again, really consistent, like a couple of hundredths off the first run, third and final run in the RS3. So we've recorded 3.61 and 3.64. Okay, so very close. Let's see what the third and final run does. Left foot is hard down on the brake. Right foot on the accelerator. Launch control is active. Here we go. Oh. Oh. 
<laughs> no way. 3.63. Well, just when I thought I was going to give the BMW an award for being consistent, this car definitely feels quicker. Andy and I have been talking off camera, so we've been turning around, and we've both been feeling it in our heads a bit more. It's a proper launch in this thing, you know, it holds it at whatever, four and a half, five thousand RPM, and it feels like it literally just drops everything, doesn't it? Yeah. You can feel the front axle just absolutely scrabbling, those 265 tires digging into the tarmac, whereas in the BM, it's really smooth and effortless. It feels about a second slower, but actually it's only about three tenths slower, so there's not a massive difference between the two. Let's go and take the BMW out on the road and see what it's like dynamically and then I'll jump in this and hopefully give you some kind of conclusion. Let's start this road piece in the £10,000 cheaper M240i X drive. And yes, I am wearing a different t-shirt compared to yesterday because the weather decided to turn upside down and left us with no option. This car is actually my new long-termer from BMW UK and I have it for the next three months which is really cool and it's arguably one of the best dailies out there for 50 odd thousand pounds if you like your driving if you want something that is a little bit punchy <laughs> It has a typically brilliant BMW driving position. Some of the best sort of all round seats in the business. I believe these are the BMW M Sport seats. Basically the same seats you'll get as standard in the M3 and the M4. So very supportive, very adjustable, but most importantly, again, if you're running this as your daily, very, very comfortable. You've got that brilliant B58, which again, you're using this car's daily is capable of doing or giving you returning you 40 miles to the gallon on a long run on top of all that you've got I'd argue the best infotainment system in the business so when you add together the brilliant driving position brilliant seats and that infotainment system With everything knocked back into comfort, well, the standard adaptive suspension gives you a really good ride quality, considering we're on 19 inch wheels and what a typical UK road, it flows along here really nicely. The brilliant acclaimed ZF8 speed gearbox, well, BMW just do something to them with their calibrations and their software, just make them better than anyone else's. And when you're in a very chilled mode, like comfort, just goes through the gears without you even knowing about it it never jumps down into a lower gear without you wanting it to it just reads your mind it's so good at doing that once again confirming that this car as a relaxed daily is just absolutely brilliant in fact this car is so good at feeling normal you sometimes forget the car that you're in and how capable it really is But if you knock it into sport individual, into sports automatic and pull a paddle, there's absolutely nothing normal about the way this car goes. We already know that it will do 0-60 in just under four seconds, two passengers up with no issues whatsoever and all weather as well. But the way it handles as we pile into here, the front end is just mighty, not quite M3 mighty, but incredible and when you put your foot down out of any corner or hairpin the tighter it is the more this car actually rewards you that x drive system just lays down all that power and all that torque and you're up to the national speed limit in seconds it's really really impressive but it's not that engaging in isolation it's not too bad but things like steering feel well it's quite numb it's more numb than my M3 and the M4, and they're not sort of oozing with steering feel. It just doesn't feel that great. And although the front end is mighty, it's kind of let down a little bit by the brakes. They're okay, they're gonna stop you, but if you use it hard, give it a couple of minutes, and they overheat, and actually, they don't feel that great. And 
once your brakes start to go, then your confidence starts to go. And even on the road, let alone on the track where, yeah, they really don't last more than about a lap and a half, two laps before the pedal is going to the floor. So it does have its shortcomings and downfalls. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with its weight. Um, but as a complete package, as a daily, as we talked about a bit earlier, it really, really is a special piece of kit. Jumping in here for the first time is a little bit confusing. You see, Audi have always done incredible interiors, especially compared to their German rivals. But this one really isn't that special. There's a lot of cheaper plastics in here. It would maybe be okay in a £30,000 A3, which is exactly the same, by the way. But in this car, it just doesn't really cut it. I mean, even the steering wheel isn't a flat bottom RS wheel. I think that's an optional extra. And then you talk about the driving position in isolation, it's not too bad, but once you've jumped out of that M240, well, I feel like I'm sitting maybe two or three inches higher. And if I sit upright, <laughs> well, my head is touching the headlining. So that's not perfect. And these seats arguably look better than the 240s ones. They're not as supportive and they're not as comfortable on longer journeys. And then you start looking into all of their infotainment system, all this touchscreen stuff. And really this new RS3 is not shaping up to be the best car. When I first tried this new RS3 at the back end of last year, out in Austria and Germany, well, I was really taken back by it. I thought it was a fantastic car. I haven't driven one since, and I thought maybe six months on, when you're comparing it to a very good benchmark like the M240i, I thought it might be a little bit disappointing. And as we talked about, it definitely has its shortcomings. But where it really starts to shine is when you put your foot down. I mean, this car is just brilliant. It really is. There's no doubting that it's an RS car. And it just has so many great ingredients. You very quickly forget about the fairly average driving position and all of the pretty cheap plastics in the interior because this car is all about driving dynamics. It's absolutely brilliant. And that starts with that brilliant two and a half litre, five cylinder turbocharged engine. The sound it produces even in today's world, well, it still harks back to the original Quattro and those iconic rally years. I absolutely love this engine and there's no denying and no doubting that it sounds better than the B58. It also produces a lot more sound whether you're sitting at a set traffic lights with your window down or cruising along your favorite A or B road. It has a lot more organic sound coming from it. So not sure how Audi have managed to extract that and still be within the regulations where BMW and the M240i, well, that car is close to silent a lot of the time. So thumbs up to the sound of this car and this engine. But it's very different in delivery compared to the B58. And I'd have to say as an overall package, when we're talking about torque and power delivery, efficiency, etc., the B58 is a better unit, although this does sound better. This is very old school in delivery. If you're in the wrong gear and you put your foot down, it takes a while for that boost to build up. But when the boost comes, <laughs> <laughs> it's a rocket ship, so you've always got to make sure you're in the right gear coming into this rather tight right hander will go back down into third, whereas in the M240i you probably wouldn't change down because of all that low down torque. It revs out reasonably well, but not quite as nice as the B58. You end up short shifting at about 5,000 RPM. This car's biggest party trick is its ride quality. I've not experienced the ride quality this good this side of BMW's 150,000 pound M5 CS. And that car has got potentially the best road setup I've ever experienced. I don't know how Audi have done it, but it just feels unbelievable. This particular press car has adaptive suspension. I believe 
it's an optional extra on the base RS3 but it's almost too good to be true whether you're in dynamic or comfort and you're going along your favorite bumpy road it just feels so plush so fluid so nice and then you expect when you throw it into your favorite bend you expect the car to roll around and not feel as good but somehow it manages to do both very very well and that is a sign of a very very good suspension setup and i remember thinking that about that original rs3 i tried about six months ago and this car has definitely reconfirmed that i mean it's just epic and really does make the m240i setup feel very wooden and cheap in comparison Something else that Audi have absolutely nailed when we're talking about driving dynamics is the steering. This car has so much feel. I mean, I know e-pass systems have kind of killed a lot of what we used to have in cars, but brands like Audi and Porsche seem to have injected steering feel back into their systems. And this car it just feels awesome might have a lot to do with the fact that the rim on this steering wheel is a lot thinner than the one in the M240i but you can just feel a lot of what's going on underneath you and that's so important in a driver's car and of course good steering feel when you hit a very good section of road well that just gives you so much back in reward it really does you can feel exactly what that front axle is doing that front axle has got so much grip those 265 section front tires and the brakes are just unreal. I mean, again, <laughs> making the BM's ones feel pretty average at best. Oh, it's just lovely. The car moves around, the rear end's very agile, obviously less grip on the rear axle, but the balance is perfect. Everything I'm talking about with this car, you'd think I'd be describing the BMW if but actually, I'm praising the driving dynamics of the Audi. They have absolutely nailed it with this car. And the BM, although very good and arguably a better daily or better all-round package, although it does only have two doors, it just can't compete with this car in terms of driving feel and outright performance. We know it's a little bit slow in a straight line, but it's definitely not as capable as this car through the twisty bits as well. So hats off once again to Audi for producing in my opinion their best driver's car to date I absolutely love this RS3 and if they weren't going for 15 or 20 grand over list I would strongly consider buying one to summarize and conclude the RS3 is the better driver's car I've had more fun over the past two days in this car I've wanted to grab the keys to this car more it's put a bigger smile on my face more of the time and sure the driving position and the interior is not as nice but when you're pushing on you quickly forget about most of that i wish the seats did have a bit more support but i'm just nitpicking this thing is just epic it really really is it's got so much character so this particular test the audi takes the win but remember, as we talked about in the intro, this is an RS car and the M240i is an M light. And that's why it is at least 10,000 pounds cheaper, a lot more when you look at what these are retailing for. Let's see what happens when the G87 M2 arrives. I'm sure that will put up a lot more of a fight against this current RS3. But until that happens, yeah. RS3 takes the crown for me anyway. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this twin test. They're always very difficult to film. There's a lot of logistics, a lot of fuel. We've gone through four tanks of fuel over the past two days, so they're very expensive. And I'm very grateful and thankful um, having my good friend Andy along to help me film, to help me drive. Um, I couldn't have done it without him. So thanks so much, Andy. I really, really appreciate it. And obviously I appreciate everyone's support and everyone watching this video. Until the next one, take it easy. 
I'm gonna go and enjoy this car off camera. Cheers.